whenever I'm ready. I walked in here and I've had a flashback for sure. I definitely gave myself a haircut in my yard yesterday without looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, well, it's time to cut my hair. I best I could get a goat in the lawn. I waited outside. This whole project did start out just kind of, uh, you know, by myself, but all the support I've had and, and watching the music grow in the last 10 years because of those influences and then also me realizing to relent and to give the reins to others made me feel more calm and more powerful at the same time. I would really like to speak about our record that's coming out, um, but I just want people to hear it and have it speak for itself. There's similarities and tributaries through all the Bon Iver records leading to this one and that still flow through this one. It's an expansive sound. We were outside of El Paso at this place called Sonic Ranch and we spent weeks out there. It's definitely the most as a band we've ever recorded, but it's a much bigger sound and we're pushing more air. It's not as focused on just the guitar sometimes. I hope when people hear the record there, kind of interested to see how we'll do it live because it's quite it's quite intense or like there's a lot of layers there's a lot of big sounds and everyone's challenged by the record and we're literally in the midst of figuring out how to do that and it feels really exciting I still want it to feel like Mad Planet <laughs> you know me and Sean and Mikey playing a, as a trio for Bon Iver 10 years ago or 11 years ago I still want it to feel like that there'll just be you know 10,000 or however many thousand people there we played some arenas before in the middle of tours and in kind of one-offs and kind of hockey arenas and stuff, but this is definitely a big step up for us. After 10 years of feeling this intimacy with the band grow and grow, we just want to try. The most exciting and successful iterations have been these merging of installation and art with the show. There's a show that we did with Sydney Opera House where we collaborated with a Minneapolis artist, Hot Tea. We created this installation inside the Opera House that was in a 360 degree environment. That show is called Circle. And we really pushed ourselves to create this unique show in this unique environment. That was one of the more rewarding creative projects that we've done. What I was amazed at is the ability of this band to reduce a room down to these intimate moments. And I think what we realize is the environment that you create and this atmosphere they create is what is most important above all. Justin and Bon Iver in general just really ask us to kind of push the limits of what can be done and what can be made creatively. The answer is Michael Brown. We've been longtime collaborators. He was the creative director of the festival at Eau Claire's. And this band now for seven, eight years. I actually met Justin backstage at a Grizzly Bear concert. We didn't really know one another, but Justin came up to me and he said, man, one day we're gonna be working together. And sure enough. I look up to Michael as an artist to be collaborating with him on our music. Um, we're sort of just giving him the ball. There's a group of artists that I have had huge respect for that we reached out to. A company called White Void, and it's led by an artist by the name of Christopher Bowder. Christopher. Hello, that's cool. Hey, how's it going? Okay. Ah, perfect. Thanks for getting together today. Uh, I just started doing all the previs and set up here in Nashville, so realized. Yeah, I saw the pictures. So things are, you know, starting to move along and. The work that White Void is doing is they have really pioneered uh, this amazing kind of spectacular looking technology that motion tracks, whether it's lasers or whether it's lights, specifically to the XYZ space of these mirrors. It creates this unique environment that is constantly changing throughout the show. You're not just going to see lights shining on the band or shining on the audience and in the room. They're going to be hitting these mirrors and actually reflecting, and the mirrors can all move. So as a light hits it, it can bend it around the room. Using automation, we can create these shapes and these patterns with these mirrors. So that's where the people from White Void have really helped us out. And uh, I mean, I saw also in your renderings that you use the lights themselves, I mean, the, the mega point is to create architectural patterns on the mirrors and then maybe bouncing. Technology that they've come together with, small winch technology. These are the devices that are actually able to, uh, to give motion to the elements. 
The mirrors themselves are custom fabricated by White Void. It's actually not a mirror, it's space age metal, but you would never know that it's not, not a mirror. I'm just glad this tour will give people a look into the work that they're doing. Six is hanging the door. One of my favorite patterns, if you look at our pictures, you will see it often, we call it Kandinsky, because Kandinsky was drawing his uh, right angle line stuff and so on. Uh, this installation is integrating these kinetic elements of the diamond shape. The concept is these concentric diamonds that are repeated and repeated. All the other, all the other show elements kind of ready to go so that, so that I'm yeah. not holding back when we're together in Milwaukee. Mm. I mean, Michael? He feels like he has to step himself up to make the show visually what it is. Because we're up there trying to figure out what instruments to dink around on and make, make sound good and sing and all that shit. So he's going nuts and he's created something that he feels challenged by. Ultimately, it comes down to the enjoyment and the experience that the audience not only walks into, but walks away with. Those communal moments where people come together in an audience are super special for me. You have to be in the moment with other people. And you have to be able to know that the person next to you is having the same communal experience. You can't recreate that moment on social media. You can't recreate that moment in videos. The only thing that you can do is be in that moment together. You talk your money up while it's living in a coal mine. So time to call your ma, hey ma, hey ma. I would have to say it's really about our sound engineer, Sandy. He woke up at April Base, he wore two trench coats to bed, like dusters, and walked down into the kitchen and, and just didn't say much. I was like, Jesus, who is this guy? <laughs> like, he looks scary. He used to be a motorcycle rider and a lumberjack. He looks like a cowboy from 200 years ago. He's his own artist too, and that's part of us bringing this feeling to the arena too. It's like, this guy is really good at making our band sound really good. They're like no other band. A musician's band in some way, and then in another way, a band for the masses. When you're looking at an artist on a stage, sometimes for a lot of the audience, the sound is actually coming from a different place. This new production, we're using a brand new sound system called the Elisa. Elisa is going to be a with image stereo, and then it's also going to be something called what you see is what you get. So when you're looking at a band on stage, they're going to sound like they're coming from the stage. It's going to feel like you're inside the music, I think, more than, than the music's coming at you. More natural and immersive. When we did our first show with the Elisa sound system, we were at the Santa Barbara Bowl. It's a three-dimensional PA with a lot more power, a lot more bass a lot more imaging specifically to make it not just two big sets of speakers coming at you. And all these live engineers and sound engineers from LA drove up listening to Sandy's mix. He just crushed it. But Josh, our manager, was just like, well, that's weird. It was like by far the best sounding show you guys have ever done. We kind of all realized that it was a pretty darn good idea and decided to try to apply it to the arena level, which Sounds kind of crazy. Honestly, there was a point when we were uh, putting this together where we kind of all looked at each other and said, like, are we going too much? Are we doing too much? The biggest challenge has been getting audio guys to think like lighting guys and lighting guys to think like audio guys. But that's the thing, you know, it's like a leap of faith or we want to try. It's like missing words, but that's okay. No, I got it. Full time, you talk your money up. While it's living in a coal mine. This time, and specifically this show, we're gonna blow it out. It's gonna be unlike anything that people have seen before. 
There's something really, really powerful about having a group of people together in a shared space, experiencing the same thing together. It's a profoundly human thing, whichever side of the equation that you're on. <laughs> in general, I feel really calm, which is a really important thing for me as I grow older. But when I step into rehearsal and when we start working on this music, that calm can ride through a whole lot of like hunger. I don't get as much out of the roar of the crowd, like for me, on me. I more feel like it is a circuitry. One, two, three. Freshman 40. We're trying to make something really live come out of the speakers and have it be paired with something really vibrant that will just be trippy as shit. So sorry.